Welcome to a new video about circuit design. In this example, we will discuss the design of an interface circuit. So we will see how we can do that step by step in the calculations and also simulation spice. And we will also show the measurement result. This will be a very interesting example where you see the connection between a sensor and a ADC, which is an analog to digital converter in between the interface circuit we need to design. So let's look at our assignment. The assignment is given as objective. We have a customer that wants to automate a pressure measurement, which requires converting the output of the pressure sensor or transducer in this case to a computer input. Now this conversion can be done using a standard integrated circuit as said before, which is an analog to digital converter, which converts the analog to a digital uh, signal. The ADC requires an input voltage between 1 volt and 13 volts and the pressure sensor uh, gives us an output between minus 150 millivolts and plus 150 millivolts. Okay, so do you already see that this is symmetrical and this is not symmetrical. We will see that shortly in detail. Now the design we need to make here is the interface. So design a circuit to interface the pressure transducer with that ADC. So there are some requirements for the input for the ADC and also what we get from our pressure transducer. Okay, that is, we need to design a circuit that translates this variation in voltage, the range of minus 150 millivolts to plus 150 millivolts to one volt to 30 volts. Okay. Now the requirements, let's go through them one by one. We need to make a drawing of the design circuit completely, including our component values or the resistors, whatever we have. We need to also compare the results of calculations, the simulation and also the measurements and also discuss the differences. Now the, we need also to prove that the specifications are met and also discuss the design steps. We will do that step by step. And we will need to use the exact component values because if you say I will take one kilo ohm for example you don't have one kilo ohm you will have a little bit larger or smaller depending on what you have in your lab and we also need to use the correct models in our simulations note that we are uh, using maximum one AC source and we can use two DC uh, voltage sources in total okay Let's see now, before we dive into the calculations, etc., what the required block diagram for this assignment is. So we have this pressure transducer, which gives us some voltage between these two nodes, Vs, which is then this minus 150 millivolts to 150 millivolts. In between, there must be an interface circuit, and then with, which goes then into the input of the ADC, and this voltage between the ADC requires between 1 volt and 13 volts. So that means the following, we need to make a translation of this Vs between these two values to Va, which is then this, these two. So this is very general. Now we need to go to the more specifics. So what we see is that we need a symmetrical AC input voltage for our interface circuit, because that is what you get from the pressure transducer. But we need to provide an asymmetrical AC output voltage of this interface circuit because that goes into the ADC. You can also see that again here in the voltage ranges. The shape of the output voltage must be the same as the input voltage, so we don't want to have any distortion or shaping. An interface circuit must then have a linear operation. That means following the information from the pressure sensor is not obscured or distorted. So mathematically, since this is a linear operation or linear function, we can say the VA, which is this, must be the VS with some uh, constant times a constant plus the B, which is actually a straightforward linear formula, where A is the steepness and the B is the starting value of our linear function. So we need to determine the parameters A and B in order to design then the actual circuit. So give a circuit now realization for the design using the values A and B. Okay, input and output relationship for our interface circuit. This is now the graph we can draw 
using the specification for the voltages here, ranges for the input of the interface and the output of the interface circuit. You see here the range starting from minus uh, 0 0.15 all the way to plus 0 0.15. And then you see the uh, value of the output of the interface circuit, which is 1, and for the 0 0.15 volt, which is then 30. And you can make, since this must be a linear operation, you can make from these two uh, nodes or these two points a linear function. So you can have two points and make a linear function. So we can now substitute these two points, which is then minus 0 0.15 comma 1 and the other one is 0 0.15 comma 13 in this formula. And you have then two equations and two nodes and you can solve that. The first one is 1 is equal to a times minus 0 0.15 plus b and you want 13 is equal to a times 0 0.15 plus b now how can we solve this let's number them first one and two equation number one and two there are many methods so in this case i see that the coefficient of a and this one are reversed in sign so we can just add them up that is i think in this case the fastest and easiest so we can add up these two equations you can get now one plus 13 is 14 is equal to this plus that is 0 so you get then 2 times b and then b will be just 7 now that goes of course very fast so we have now one of the unknowns now since we have one of the unknowns we can use this equation number one or equation number two to calculate the other unknown which is a it doesn't matter where you use it so i substitute then b is equal to 7 in one of the equations i think i will use this one equation number two that will be 13 is equal to a times 0 0.15 plus 7 because I already have that and I can then calculate which is then subtract left and right hand side 7 you get 6 is equal to 0 0.15 times a then a is then straightforward 40. Now we have our equation from here now in the values with a and b. Okay we need to realize now this formula using electric circuits so components resistors op amps or whatever you want to use it but if i look at this formula before we dive into the circuit realization i see here an amplification and i see an addition now that means i need an amplification which is non-inverted i also need the level shifting because i have to go up so there are many methods and many variations for our circuit and in order to be let's say uh, very efficient i have chosen for this circuit you see the input vs here which is our variation of the tra uh, transistor pressure transducer uh, output and this is the va which goes to the adc the vcc here is a dc voltage source which is also powering up the op amp here which is also have another uh, uh, power supply which is negative VE. you see here four resistors what do you see actually this is actually looking from the VS only and disabling VS VCC. This is actually a non-inverting amplifier with uh, some attenuation here. And we will now use, in this case, the superposition principle to determine the VA in terms of VS and the VCC. But the VCC is just a constant value, let's say 10 volts or 15 volts, but the changing is VS and then because of that the VA. So if I use now the superposition principle, activating one source at a time, we have discussed this in our electric circuits uh, playlist. So if you want to learn more about that, go to the uh, DC electric circuits playlist in this channel. So what you have is the following. I go uh, through this one by one. You see actually that you disable the v as a VCC, then this will be ground. Then we have a, uh, in this node, we have um, voltage division. That will be then R4 divided by R3 plus R4, that's this part, times the voltage here, and then the voltage here, times the non-inverting amplifier formula, which is then the feedback resistor divided by the resistor here, which is this, plus 1 plus, of, of course, that, that. And then times the Vs. In a similar form, when you do the VCC, you need to disable Vs, and then the uh, things actually are the same here, but it is reversed because now you measure the voltage from here to ground. Now you do R3 over R3 plus R4. And then again, the same formula for the non-inverting amplifier we have here and then times VCC. The, we have actually four unknowns here, the resistors. We also don't know what VCC is, so we need to select the value here. And the VS will be changing and that will then make the change of VA. And this graph must be then satisfied. 
Okay. Now, comparing this expression with the mathematical expression we have found, which is this one, so we compare this with that. What do you see? Now, you see actually the following. If you look at it, you see this part, which is in front of Vs, which is 40. So you just say this is 40. And this part completely is 7. Again, looking at these two equations, I have five unknowns. So I have to choose something. So there are some choices we need to make because five unknowns and two equations, we need to select three, at least. I mean, in this case, we just select three and then the other two will follow. Now, both expressions have a term, one plus R2 or R1, also here. So let's just designate that with a simple uh, uh, value or I mean simple parameter I call this just X and we also substitute 50 for our VCC for our power supply for our op-amp that will also go here so I already make a first choice what we have now then we have the following R4 over R3 plus R4 times X is a 40 that's the first one and the other one is uh, I mean excuse me we, we can also go here because I need to first rewrite this then we have an R4 times X it will be then 40 times these two together in the parentheses that's the first one so we will continue with that one we take we work out the parentheses we bring everything with the r4 together to the left side so we keep the r3 here on the right side and then make here the uh, the, the the parentheses and then we have an r4 now this is now the formula three we'll use later now going to the other equation which is then the r3 over r3 plus r4 and this is 15 and this is also x so we have then 15 times x which is just 7. now also work out this in a similar form 15 times x times r3 is equal to 7 times this you see that again the summation of r3 and r4 that will be this if you work out the parentheses now let's now bring every r3 term to the left side you get this and then take it together in one parentheses you get this and you can now also uh, express that in r4 by dividing everything by 7 so you get now 15 over 7 and 7 over 7 is 1 in the parentheses and you get this now, this is now equation number 4 what's the next step the next step is substitute now equation number 4 in equation number 3 because then you can lose here the r4 and substitute that for r3 and you have then everything here in terms of r3 which is this you see that now we can now divide out r3 from the left and right hand side because r3 will be not zero so mathematically we can divide it out then you get this simpler expression now we can of course solve this using uh, the formula for a quadratic equation but you can also say let's use solver why not that so you can solve it the first solution will be zero you can also see that actually if you make this zero and that zero it will be the minus 40 times minus one will be just 40 and the other solution will be then exactly seven or six on the seven over 15 but approximately 14 point 40.467 but this is invalid why because if this is zero that means this is zero in order to get this zero then this must be minus one which is impossible so that goes but this is then the only possible solution if i look this this value x that means if this is x which is 40.5 approximately then this must be then uh, 40.5 minus one will be at 30 uh, 39.5 so you can already see that this ratio must be already uh, uh, known from this expression now let's then select because we already made a choice of vcc we still need to choose the other two parameters so let's select the one just uh, r1 is one kilo ohm, just uh, straightforward uh, value you can also take 100 or the 10 kilo ohm, it doesn't matter it does matter of course if you have power restrictions and also noise uh, specification but we don't discuss that in this example so i will take this and if i look at the formula for the uh, uh, x which is then one plus r2 over r1 i can say this is then 40.467 minus one and times r1 will be then r2 so that's really then 39.467 kilo ohms okay so we already know also r1 and r2 in a simple form i can select here the r3 because that's now the third choice and this is also the final choice and i can calculate now the r4 i select again one kilo ohm, and then calculate using this formula four you get now this again you substitute here the x which is given here and we get now we are 85.714 kilo ohms so this is now the summary of the four resistors in this 
circuit and also the VCC is 15 volts. Okay, let's bring it together and now look at the next step, which is the simulation results. This is the circuit in the simulator. You see here the simulation uh, circuit. You see the actual model of the op-amp, which is in this case the TL072. We see the VCC and VE, which are 15 and minus 15 here. You see that there's also VCC and also the other resistors. Okay, let's see what we see in the plot. Now, this one, the green one, is our input, and the blue one is our output of the interface circuit. So, the input and the output. I made a triangle for the input, and also look at the output, which is also like a triangle. So, first thing is you see that this there's no shaping or distortion. What you also see is that this label A has a value here, maximally 0.15, so 150 millivolts. That's also shows here. And you get now a 13 volts as required. But the lowest one, minus 0.15 volts, that's actually shown here, will give you 1.082 volts. So it is somewhat off, so 82 millivolts off, but fine for all practical purposes, so we can still tune this. So we can say, from the simulation, we can say this circuit will do the job fairly good. Okay, that's for the simulations. Let's also look at now the measurements, because we also have measured this circuit using actual component values, so there are some changes in this. So this resistor was actually a bit large also for this one, and this is also very close to that one. So I made, uh, I tried to get as close as possible to these four resistor values, and also used the OPAM TL072. This first one is our plot of the input. I actually see here two plots. You see the yellow one, which is our input, which goes actually from minus 0. Point, uh, actually minus 142.4 millivolts. So I actually tried using the signal generator as close as possible, but that's about what I get, what I get ex uh, at best. And the peak value is 100. 56.9 millivolts. What you see is the peak peak value is approximately 300 millivolts because that's also shown here. So in that sense, we get the same range, but it is a little bit shifted up. And this is now the range. And the blue one is the output of the interface circuit. Now, I also made a new plot and I also uh, enlarged this blue line to measure the two peaks more accurately. That's now the second one. So the exact same uh, measurement, only I changed the uh, scaling of this because this is now uh, for per division 5 volts in this case you see that this is the per division 2 volts so you can measure that accurate more accurately with the cursors and again this one blue one which is our boot you see the minimum is 931.3 millivolts but the highest one is 13.08 volts so you see actually if you look at it this is minus let's say 132 millivolts goes to approximately 931 millivolts so we can say this is not exactly what i wanted but it's close and this one 100 let's say 57 millivolts goes to 13.08 volts which also close again not exactly but you can never get it exact in this form and you see that the range here is 13.15 volts and the range here is i mean 12.15 volts so it's range here is 12 volts but for all practical purposes, I think this is a very nice result looking at our uh, simulation results, the calculation also here, the measurements. So I can say this job is done, so the design is completed. And we also see again that the waveform is not distorted or any other problems, non-linearities. All right, this is our example about an interface circuit design from the pressure sensor to the DC, uh, ADC. If you have any questions, comments about this design, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.